Hey guys, what's going on? Shaw here, and today in this video, we are going to be taking a look at a 20 lower tyrannical. This was done uh, just last night. I wanted to walk through it because a lot of you guys have been asking me for like guides slash walkthroughs through lower Karazhan. And to be quite honest with you, I just haven't had a good enough run that I've wanted to show off. I just last night, actually on my Guardian Druid, I don't even have the port yet. And just the, last night, I was able to time my first 20 on my prop warrior actually ahead of all classes which is kind of unique we two chested this key so the route i would say is pretty efficient but again what's nice about this dungeon is it's fairly um it has a very subjective routing meaning that it's flexible in its route based on your group comp so this is a we use a strat in here called a reset a reset strat which is essentially where you clear to a certain point then you just you all die on purpose to then reset back to the checkpoint to then make your way through another part of the dungeon I've talked about this in a past video, I'll have it linked up above, but it's totally acceptable to run and like kind of pull th just by holding W. So it really depends on your comp, but that's what we do in this video. We only have two deaths outside of that at various points. I'll point those out when we get to it, but I wanted to walk through everything we did. I'm not going to be focused on my gameplay as much because I made a lot of mistakes. I wasn't, I, I was playing okay, but I wasn't playing super great. I was not grading, getting great banner up time, but there's a lot of running around. So while this video starts playing, I'm going to kind of just talk about our comp. So we're running a Frost Mage, a Fury Warrior, and a Serve Hunter. So semi-meta, semi-not-meta. We also have the Holy Priest. The Holy Priest was a pug. The rest of us were in Discord, so we knew what we were doing. So really, all we would wanted the, the healer to do is, is heal. I didn't really care about their damage. They were bringing fairies. They were bringing PI. That's all we really needed them for. This, this dungeon on Tyrannical Weeks is known for having really brutal bosses. The Opera Hall is brutal. Morose is also brutal. But we're going to walk through exactly how we counter that here in a bit. So the Frost Mage, the reason that we do this route is because Frost Mages require... In order to do optimal damage, they require consistent kind of back-to-back -back pulls while their CDs are active. Because they get cooldown reduction based on how many crits they have to keep Icy Veins, which is their major cooldown always up always active so icy veins gives them an extraordinary amount of haste i think it's like 20 to 30 percent while it's active so that obviously gets them faster ticks on the ticker tick rates faster cast speeds um which means like in turn more procs which means more damage which means more cdr which in turn keeps icy veins up frost mage is pro i talk shit about frost mages all the time in this season because they're it's really hard to play around them in a lot of these dungeons but this is a dungeon that they can kind of uh you know get pulled off in and actually does a fair bit of damage obviously serve is a meta spec it's just going to do a lot of consistent damage all the time very bursty has md uh a little squishy outside of turtle but they also have exil they have leech pet they bring lust if we need if we didn't have a mage it's fine and then the fury warrior is kind of like this a tier spec right in the middle they bring a lot of damage they are target capped but it's very consistent throughput they have a lot of survivability a lot of cool tricks with spell reflex pretty fun comp so I know a lot of groups like to skip this first spirit. I don't think it's actually that bad, but again, this is just a 20 uh, on my Guardian Druid, even up to like, I think we attempted a 25. This spirit on my Guardian Druid, I don't mind pulling as long as you're running and getting kicks. So what we do is we have our Fury Warriors just kind of like nailing it. They're going to make sure that they get the kick. Uh, it's only, it's a 15 second internal, and then that's it. We're also going to be pulling a couple packs on the, on the left side here. I do mess up this first part. I kind of like couldn't get good positioning right off the rip. I lost threat there on our Fury Warrior, uh, and then we're trying to group up all of this. So Pennies unfortunately started going off beforehand. We got a Shockwave there. In these polls, the Philanthropists, we call them Phillies, Philly Cheesesteaks. Super cringe, I know. Those are the priority, as well as the Spirit. Whenever they're casting Pennies from Heaven, you need to watch out for these red swirls. You can kind of see them going off if you don't have enough stuns. Problem with running a Frost Mage, for example. They don't really bring a stun. They don't bring a knockback. They don't bring anything outside of like polling, but they're undead. So I'm not sure if you can poly undead. I don't think you can. Pretty rough. But I, I walked into a sleep pool here, which is kind of frustrating. And then our Fury Warrior charged into the same pool uh, because the mobs were on top of me. Pretty clean to start though. Now again, this is the problem is like our Frost Mage is trying to keep their Icy Veins up, which I think it just fell off there. Uh, so unfortunately, they're kind of going to be doing a lot of low damage. Normally, we're able to chain that pull fast enough to keep Icy Veins up, but you always want five or more targets when there's a Frost Mage in your group, essentially. So as soon as we interrupt this Pennies, I'm going to actually start and starting to chain pull here because we have it locked down. But I know that Icy Veins is no longer active. Oh, actually, it's active again. Never mind. I thought she missed it here. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy. When we're down here, 
Uh, we're kind of just pulling one pack at a time until the patrons start to get a little bit lower, and then we'll continue moving on to the next pull. Once you get to this last pack with the Natherism in it, you want to send someone downstairs. It could be a DPS, it could be a healer. Basically, if your tank knows that they can survive, your healer can go. If your tank might need help for some reason, send your send one of your DPS. What they need to do is they need to go all the way downstairs. So we're going to actually have our serve hunter is going to go now. He's going to go downstairs, talk to the stage manager so they can start the play. And then by the time you get down there, if you're fast enough or maybe slow enough in this case, the RP is going to be done and you can go right into boss, which is really, really efficient for time. Now, again, this timer is pretty lenient. So if you don't do that, it's not an end of the world, but it's a really, really good time save. I don't recommend running with the infiltrator into the hallway because the frontals plus sleep pools in this tight hallway is a little obnoxious. Um, I don't think there's a sleep pool down here. Okay, no. I've ran so many runs of this place. So this week, we are dealing with Beauty and the Beast, which is going to be all like the silverware and the kobold and the, and the broom and like the inanimate objects that are, you know, to life. EU has a different rotation than us. They're, I think, a week. Neither a week behind or a week ahead. I don't remember. But... We're going to be doing this boss this week, but EU doesn't have to deal with this. And I think KR regions might have a different boss as well. I'm not really sure because my audience is mostly EU and NA players. So we have some time. I'm going to grab food buff here just to reset. I have 16 minutes left, which I forgot to grab at the start of the dungeon. But we're going to just grab food buff and make sure we're ready to go. Now, the general priority for this will be Broom, followed by the Kobold, followed by the Cauldron. You want to make sure you're targeting Broom then kicking heat wave on the kobold and then interrupting soup sprays when you can so every time a mob dies the other mobs will get raised back to 100 health and they will have 25 percent increased damage so as you kind of defeat more and more mobs during this fight you're going to have to you're going to be taking more damage so it's even more important that you get kicks so we're going to have our warrior on a it's a 25 second cooldown they need to watch the heat wave so every 25 seconds they'll be kicking the rest of us, the rest of the people who can kick, are going to be making sure we're getting kicks on the soup spray when we get the opportunity to, while maintaining damage on the broom. Uh, I think the start of this fight actually goes to shit, like right off the rip, but we we recover. Uh, we have a death, we get a battle res, and then we'll finish up the fight. So we're setting focus to the cauldron, Mrs. Cauldron, and we're focusing Bablet. I'm charging in and making sure that I'm trying to hold threat on these two. Now the dusting is coming right through the group. I think it's actually fixated on me, so I get disoriented here. Uh, so... It got kind of wild. I didn't realize that the broom can fixate on the tank. If I'm being completely honest, I didn't realize that was a possibility. So it goes onto our mage, no, our warrior now, who's kiting it away while trying to maintain some damage. Heat waves coming out in five seconds, and our our so our, our surf hunter. I think in this, I don't think he's ever actually pulled this boss before, so he was a little confused on what was going on. So he was stuck in the leftovers and got killed from it. Don't kick leftovers. Just get out of it. Players then who have the soup spray debuff, so right now it's on our mage, you can see it here. This, if you have this debuff, you're allowed to walk through fire to clear the area. Which is really efficient when the broom is still up. So we did kill Bablet. We're trying to figure out how to get a res on Magrum, our serve hunter, and we're going to get him up soon. We're not getting a lot of kicks on soup spray, but it's not too scary yet. We still have access to both shouts and CDs. Dodge the leftovers and making sure that we're still kicking Heat Wave. Heat Wave was just kicked about 5 seconds ago, so we have another 17 seconds currently. And then we're going to just do a kick rotation on Miss Cauldron, Mrs. Cauldrons. And that's pretty much it. Like, once the broom dies, it's a little bit more um, stable of a fight, though it's a little bit scarier for missing kicks. So Heat Wave comes out now. The Warrior's going to make sure we get a kick. And then we're also kicking Soup Spray when we get the chance. We are letting some go off because we do need a clear fire still because the fire will keep growing, making giving us like a lot less room to work with. So before Cauldrons dies, you need to make sure all the fire in the room is cleared. So Nama has the debuff right now. He's running over to clear one here, and he's he's hero cleaving into the other, clearing the rest of the room, and we are looking good. So right now we're just going to go down the list. Uh, it's going to be like me, Mag, uh, Nama into like our mage, Kalea, to kick. I don't remember if that's the exact kick order, but ideally we're just making sure we're calling. We're not kicking leftovers to save our kicks for that soup spray, because leftovers, again, is avoidable. Now the scariest part of this fight is when the Cogglestone, Cogglestone becomes active. He's going to spawn enemies uh, that do a ton of damage. They apply bleeds to your party members. This is when you're going to want to save Lust and your CDs for. So we have uh, Cord, we have Res Arrow, we have uh, Blades Run with Wreck. We have pretty much all of our CDs up ready to blast this guy. So it's going to activate now. I'm going to charge in. We're going to get the Lust out in a second. 
And we're gonna the priority here is to kill forks while cleaving onto Cogleston. And ideally you want to beat like the fourth dinner bell or maybe fifth dinner bell. I don't remember exactly. And then the dent armor is what's gonna do a lot of damage to us. So making sure you have shield block up, making sure you have celestial brew, uh, your iron furs, your survival instincts, whatever that might be for your cooldowns. I'm just naming off cooldowns that are on the top of my head, shield walls, whatever it might be. So we are absolutely blasting this with all our CDs up. So again, use CDs on pull, and then you're just basically saving until Cogglesun comes out with Lust. And now that this should be our last set of forks, they are CCable, they are stunnable, so we're gonna like use things like Shockwave, Intimidate, Stormbolts, uh, just to make sure that they're we're minimizing the damage that they're doing to their group. They do so much damage. You can see that I've rolled pretty much all my CDs. I don't have Last End, I don't have Shield Wall, I don't have Demo Show, my avatar's on CD. Uh, it's pretty scary. Also, Kick Dinner Bell, if it goes off, your tank is going to just die immediately. So, pretty good so far. We've been really clean. We've only had one death, and it was just to someone not being familiar. So what we're doing here is we're going to clear the backstage area. I think this trash is very efficient. It's very easy for a tank to kite it out. It doesn't do a ton of damage to the tank because of the spell queuing. I'm going to leap in here, taunt the crew, and then I'm going to be getting a life grip back to the start. I had Nama move out so I can get an intervene on him, but the, the priest kind of read the room and knew that he had to go into life grip me. So it was really good. I think there's like six or seven targets here. It's hard to see because of the nameplates down below. Now, a lot of you have told me that pulling back to the stage is a bad idea. It's only a bad idea if you don't understand which of your abilities can clip through the floor, and if you see where I'm positioning them. I'm hugging them around this corner here, and then we're backing them up towards like the set pieces, these like this fake rock and fake tree, because then it won't clip through the floor if we're placing down AoE. So you can see res arrows here, it's not clipping through the floor. The Kyrian spears over here, blizzards are being placed here. All of our AoE is going to be center stage or further back. Now you have to be careful of this wall because there are some spells that can clip through here. But for the most part, it's pretty safe as long as your DPS know where to place their AoE effects. The only spells off the top of my head that I know for a fact are going to be pulling down here is Divine Storm. And I think there's Rain of Fire. If you clip it on the edge here, it can actually clip down below. But a Divine Storm frontal will actually go over the edge, drop down, and tag the stuff down here, which is bad. So uh, don't play with Red Paladins. Easy. Red Paladins are actually really good right now. So if you see a Red Paladin, a good Red Paladin, you know, give them an invite. Give them a shot. And then we're going to just kind of cruise this trash down by kiting kind of back and forth. Now your range players can stand in the spotlight if it's safe, and they're going to actually get a 50% damage boost. It doesn't last forever. It lasts for a very short period of time. But if you have mobile casters moving into these spotlights, very, very efficient while moving the mobs out of it. So you can see I'm just kind of rolling general cooldowns. I'm rolling my, you know, keeping shield block up time, keeping avatar, keeping demo shot active when I can. And now we're going to do a second pull here. So same thing's going to happen. I'm going to, uh, I'm waiting for Nama. I'm hero leaping up here. I'm tagging this pack here. And then I'm going to see if I can grab these Undersundies. So this is going to be a little bit bigger pull because we have coordinated assault. I'm getting the intervene, which is beautiful play by Thick Pancake. Sometimes I feel like I'm semi-hosting the MDI uh, when I'm doing this. Um, and again, keeping everything positioned here. We're baiting frontal away from the group. And then we're bringing this stuff back center stage. And now this is where I'm going to roll some of my larger CDs. So I have banner active. I roll last stand for rage generation. Uh, you can kick Poetry Slam, but again, it's avoidable, so there's no reason to wait, waste kicks. There's no reason to try to inch in to try to get a kick, because you might get clipped by another Slam. So you can see our DPS are fucking crushing it here. 96k, 99k out from the Surf Hunter. Our Fury War is doing good damage, and of course, Frost Mage bringing that consistent AoE and the slow, so I'm able to kite uh, still, while still maintaining about 40k DPS. So pretty good. Final Curtains are going out, which means that they're going to die, and now at this point, we are just... I'm just typing out to our priest that we die now, so we're going to just run downstairs and do that. Now, again, it is possible to kill Zolgamex or Invis Pascal Zolgamex, do the trash downstairs, and just keep pulling forward. But again, with the Frost Mage in our group, we want to main, like, we want to maintain Icy Veins the whole time. Therefore, we're going to try to do that by pulling larger pulls that aren't as dangerous. These singers can get pretty scary if you don't have enough AoE in your group, like AoE CC. And again, we're running the Frost over the fire, so we don't have access to DB. We don't have, like, a Windwalker Monk for Leg Sweep. We only have Shockwave as kind of that group stun so this is where we're, this is called the reset strat so we're resetting our to the checkpoint and we're going to be getting down a, i think our our hunter drops a feast here we all personal food and then our hunter drops a feast behind us so this guy's mag you're just you're a douche um but we're going to eat up here priest is also coming back up i think that everyone else just goes personal food though and then we're going to continue clearing so at this point we're going to morose and the reason we're going to Morose is because we want to clear the trash around there and then go into Morose right when Lust comes up, if possible. Now, we are cruising. Because we Lusted at the end of the last boss fight and at the start, our Lust timer is going to be a little bit skewed from normal. Normally, we Lust at the start of a boss fight. So we have to basically clear trash for six minutes. 
is the idea here, especially on Tyrannical Weeks. On Fortified Weeks, there's an argument to be made where you don't have to have Lust for Murrows, but Murrows is still a very scary fight. So the way to do this is, or at least how my group does, it, does this, is we jump down into this uh, the banquet hall in Morose's room and we pull the warden with one pack to start. I'm making sure that I'm tagging this waiter because he does patrol around. And we're going to just roll some general cooldowns here. We have Avatar up, we have Demo Shout. These Arcane Warden debuffs, these circles, they do damage to mobs. So if, if your group is safe, if your you know, warrior is moving out a little bit, it's on our uh, hunter, I'm going to be fine because I'm going to, I have defensives up. It's going to do damage to these guests, and it's going to just annihilate them. So now we're going to chain this into the next table once I know that I have some AoE up to be able to actually grab threats. Um, and we're going to just do the same thing. So essentially what we're doing is we're using the Arcane Warden's debuff to clear these guest packs. And you're going to see us through that do that throughout these next couple of pulls. So this Warden's going to go down. I'm picking up a Ghost Trap. Uh, I don't trust. I don't trust anyone else to actually use them. So I'm going to grab this guest pack with this guest pack. Uh, we don't have a warden active. Do I? I don't. I can't remember if I tag the warden in this in this pool or if I wait. Guests are guests are easy. They basically remove the casts. So they used to have random casts that would actually be RNG based per run. They removed that I think last week or two weeks ago. So the guests are basically just DPS fodder. So here's what we're gonna do on this next pool is we're gonna go double guest warden again. So I'm having the group wait back a little bit. I'm tagging the far guest pack. I'm also getting the close guest pack, and then we're backing it up in line of sitting around the corner. There's no casters, so we don't have to LOS, but there are some patrols in that room that move around, so you want to be a little bit safe. Dodge those swirls that you just saw, and then also try to overlap those giant circles on top of the guests if you need to, because it does a lot of damage. Only if your tank is looking stable, though. Again, dodge the swirl. Be careful about tanking on the table. I do this all the time, but my DPS always end up getting stuck. So the Warden is going to go down here. And we're going to do one more kind of unique pull. I'm saying stay here to the priest so they know I'm going to put down a marker for my warrior to stand on Nama. He's my he's basically my intervene bitch. So I'm going to pull this far guest pack and the servant. We're also going to tag this guest pack and we're going to wait them for all, all of them to kind of get to us. So we're not pulling any extra trash in here. And then we are going to intervene our Nama. Wait, or do we? No, we don't. We end up not doing it because of LOS issues. <laughs> I dip super low here because they're hitting me in the back without shield block up, but... That's okay. We'll recover. We're, we're, we're pretty stable here. I end up not pulling the warden in like I intended to because I got a low and I got low health and I got a little bit scared. We ended up just deleting this pack too. So now we're going to do warden and try to tag in a few extra mobs if possible. So again, these also do damage to the warden. So you can see how we kind of overlap them here on top of the warden and it does a good bit of damage. I think each hit does about 5% of its health uh, and even more to the guests. So if you're able to double overlap on the guest packs, it, they just, they get vaporized. It's pretty, it's pretty insane. It'll only go on, if I'm not mistaken, it only goes on your DPS and healer. So the tank will never get that debuff. All right, now we notice that we have three minutes left. So we are Feeling pretty good. I'm trying to figure out actually what to pull here because we're so fast and we're actually, we've been really clean. A lot of my runs up to this point have not been this clean. So we're baiting these guests back a little bit just to keep them away because we don't want this retainer attendant pull in the middle of the room. They're just a, a big pain in the ass. They do a bunch of group damage. They do, they heal. Um, they cast like MCs and shit. It's just, it's not fun. They're not fun packs to deal with, especially when you don't have like an all melee group for kicks or a lot of disrupts. And then this pack, we're going to just hang on the stairs, and we're like looking at our lust timer, and we're like, okay, we need we need lust for Moroz. We're not doing Moroz without lust, so we're going to go continue to clear trash here. Unfortunately, the, uh, our Frost Mage might lose Icy Veins in this transition, though, because of this. Normally, what happens is we have actually, like, lust is coming up now, so we can go into Moroz. She still has Icy Veins. It's good. But this kind of travel time is really rough. Now, these chargers are super dangerous. It's mostly their trembling stomp that's going to do group damage, especially on weeks like this where they get enraged. And these charges, you want to bait into the wall away from your group. So have like fairly consistent positioning. It's similar to like the Grim Royal Depot stuff that I've talked about. Just make sure you're always kind of facing frontals at one spot. So that's why I marked with this blue marker here. My group knows that blue marker is probably not the best place to stand. So it's good for melee to know that. It's good for range to know that. And uh, we're going to just kind of double pull this and just destroy it. Surf Hunters do so much damage, man. It's ridiculous. So we found this. Uh, I'm going to then tag in this next Apprentice pull. And I hit the Thunderclap here, but I guess I missed some of them. 
and our priest is gonna die. I'm I'm really bad. So this is actually 100% my fault. At first I thought like, oh, maybe he ripped it with healing aggro, but I was like, there's no way, because I took like no damage there. And uh, yeah, he ends up dying. We're gonna solo this pack, and then by the time he releases and runs back, we're gonna be back at Moreau's. These smashes do a lot of damage, and then we're baiting the charges into the wall if possible uh, to minimize group damage, or to make it so the DPS feels safer. Because again, charges are completely and 100% dodgeable. Uh, pretty solid, pretty solid here. I'm like not putting up shield block and it's triggering me because I know that I like, I think that I always have shield block up and sometimes I just don't. I don't, I need to pay attention to it more. All right, cool. We are all set. The priest just got back to us, but we're going to be going back up anyway. So they got to the party a little too late. All right, let's, so we're running right back to Murrows. I'm going to fast forward a couple seconds. So <laughs> our hunter is such a fucking troll. So here's what's going to happen. On this rotation specifically, essentially, like, this is a weird way to say it, but I, this is how it was explained to me, and it always makes sense. Kill the guys before you kill the girls in this fight. It, it, no matter what the rotation is, you want to trap Von Lindy and Barry Buck. If you have a third CC or if you unlock additional ghost traps, which are located at other points in the instance, you could trap more than this. But if you have things like Frozen Trap, Shackle, you can just Shackle them instead. So our, <laughs> our hunter actually resets the boss for some dumb reason right after we use ghost trap so he's gonna <laughs> he tags it and then feigns here <laughs> fucking idiot fucking idiot uh so we have to wait for boss to reset and then we also have to wait for ghost traps to come back so now we have to wait basically 40 seconds so i'm gonna fast forward while we wait uh seven seconds left so again we're going to send a trap onto von lindy here Again, you have to target the mob. It's not like a, a ground effect. And then we need to throw a, another ghost trap at Barry Buck. We accidentally throw it in for, uh, oh, we have a third ghost trap for some reason. I'm not sure who picked up the third ghost trap. I don't remember. But again, you can do third ghost traps. So we're going to kill Druger. Druger and then Ferentz is pretty much the, the name of the game here. So we're going to lust on pull. We're hard focusing down Druger. He does this iron whirlwind. Basically, he kind of like fixates on a player and kind of goes at them. Um, melee need to be more careful for this. And, uh, then we're gonna tag Inference next. Now, we have to be careful of the Willowbreaker cast coming out, because while he's up there, he does have the Dinner Guest buff, which gives him 50% increased haste. There's the Willowbreaker. You can jump out of it. Supposedly, you can also, if you're up in the air from Storming or Volcanic, it'll actually not hit you, but I don't recommend risking that. And, uh, once Willowbreaker, once we kill Ferenc here, we're gonna be getting ready to pull in Berry Buck. Now, again, this order doesn't matter as much. I just prefer getting Barry Buck down because of Empowered Arms. And then we'll we'll finish off Von Lindy when we get the chance. So we're just doing a very simple kick rotation. I think you only need two kicks for Barry Buck, if I'm not mistaken. It's very, very easy. So we re-ghost trap Von Lindy. Uh, when Moreau's hit 60%, they're all going to break out of their traps anyway. So we can't really wait too much longer. He's at 65 already. Um, now 64, 63. So Von Lindy's going to come out pretty much at the same exact time. So we're going to get a range kick on her from our Frost Mage. As soon as she starts her first cast here, the Smite. We're going to set focus, and then we are now just kind of like cleaving her down. I keep her targeted, but ideally you just can... As long as you're kicking her, she doesn't do much, so then you just focus Moroz. Because essentially Moroz is a HPS check. Can you heal through the bleeds for the whole fight, for the rest of the fight? They do only last a minute now, but on Tyrannical Weeks, oh man, do they do they hurt. So nothing too crazy here. It's just basically a single target race and you pray that you don't get a bleed if you're a hunter because man, is that a pain to heal a hunter with a bleed on them. So yeah, that's pretty much it. There's nothing else to really talk about. He's going to vanish and then like stealth behind someone to try to, you know, stun them. You can like our frost mage did a good job blocking there. And um, you can also like dwarf racial remove it. You can carry and fire remove the bleed. It's all, that's possible. I don't know if you meld the cast if it, retargets let's see if he does one more cast advantage so he goes on he goes on oh i can't tell who he's targeting oh he's targeting me yeah okay that makes sense and then that's it that's the fight now one thing we always forget to do is when he dies he drops keys click on the keys pick them up because if you wipe later you'll need it all right so we are two bosses in 64 percent trash and we are 21 minutes into the key we have 20 minutes left so we're halfway done roughly Timer wise. So ideally what we're going to do is we're going to run all the way down here and we're going to continue pulling the chargers and the hands. So we're going to focus the hand, make sure we get a kick on it. 
And then I'm, I think I'm also just going to pull one charger pack. I don't want to go over aggressive here because with a random healer in group, I don't trust them. This hay pile is also weird line of sight. So just be careful of that. Big blade storm coming out. And then again, those trample stomps, the, tram the, tr the trampling stomps, those just do a burst of AOE damage. You want to make sure you're kicking those while the charges can just be sidestepped. So they're almost dead. So I'm chaining here, trying to aim frontals again away from my group where my group's located. Two target cleave here is fine. Again, the name of the game in this dungeon is stay alive the whole time. If you don't die or wipe, the dungeon actually has a very forgiving timer. If you kind of over pull and you wipe a bunch, you're going to find yourself failing this key more, more often than not. All right, so they're low. I'm chaining the next pull in. I'm making sure that I personally am targeting the hand and kicking the heel. It's about a 25 second internal cooldown. So we only need one melee kick for it. And then you also have the trembling stomps that you can use AOC, AOC, AOE CC for. Holy shit, can I talk? Uh, and then you can just save your AOE like stuns and stuff for like either charges or trembling stomps as well. So healing touch is going off. I make sure we get the kick on it. And that's pretty much it. Super, super easy. Charges are going into the next room. We have to be a little careful here. They do a lot of damage if you get hit by it. So you want to make sure you're not getting hit by it. We're sending focus to the next hand. We're going in. Uh, and I like to kind of tank them next to this cart facing this like kind of beam on the wall. So my DPS can kind of spread out like in this area, you know, uh, where they don't feel too scared. The brawn knock is kind of troll, but does move them away from that sleep pool on the ground, which is very beneficial for the melee. So we're just going to back away a little bit from that pool. I can see it here. And that's pretty much it. Focus the hand, kill the hand, then after that, you focus Infiltrator, then focus Chargers, and you go into boss. You can see that Frost Mage damage really shining here. That consistent AoE is, is, in a lot of dungeons like this, very nice. In other dungeons like Grimrail Depot or Upper, not so much. Have, not, not so much fun having a Frost Mage in your group. Alright, Midnight. Slash Huntsman. This is a boss that can make or break your group. They remove the Dispel, which is awesome. Healers no longer have to do that, which means you no longer need that uh, weak aura. Weak aura was super awesome, but it kind of trivialized the fight, or it made it impossible because if no one, if not, if someone in your group didn't have it, it didn't tell them. All right, so here, here's the real, here's the meat of the fight. This is where the tank needs to be paying the most attention because you have mortal strike and shared suffering you have to watch out for. Now, ideally, you would just group soak the shared suffering. What I do and what some groups do is they either run out of it, or they, uh, you solo soak it. Now on a 20 Tyrannical, I was able to solo soak. I think I end up actually dying here. Now that I think about it, I think, I think it fucks up. Oh, it does fuck up. Okay. So here's the tech I want to talk about. Okay. You can run, leap, charge, intervene out of shared suffering. You can also get life grip out of it. It's really cool tech, but you have to be careful because sometimes it spell cues him and he might cast it back to back. And that's why I end up dying here. So Here's what that looks like. So shared suffering is happening now. All of the melee DPS are going to be moving away from me. And I'm going to heroic leap to green to dodge it. But unfortunately, he then recasts it. So once you dodge it, you want to keep moving away from him. So his spell cue goes back to mortal strike. Unfortunately, I wasn't good enough there. And I think I can solo soak it here. And uh, I end up using shield wall and I actually am able to soak. So we're chilling. So... The second phase of with Midnight active is going to be the charge phase. He's going to activate like three or four of these. I think it's three. You just walk behind the one you dodge. Next one's coming in. Sidestep, walk behind it, and you're good. Same thing here. The last set's a little scarier just because of the RNG. It's either a three-way where it comes like on the side and it goes through, or it just comes back. The, they're a little bit longer and they just kind of go side to side. Huntsman is out again. So we're going to do our best to... Do I? I don't. Maybe I don't die here. Maybe it was in a 21 or 22 that I ended up dying. So we're facing Mortal Strike into the wall away from our range so they don't, or our melee so they don't get hit by it. It does cut your health in half, so that's what we have to kind of watch out for. That's why it's really dangerous with uh, the shared suffering. So we're going to get ready. We're going to heroic leap to green and we're going to run away a little bit, and then he's going to go into a Mortal Strike instead. So that's what I was talking about, where you can actually change his spell queuing based on how far you run away from him. He's doing shared suffering. Uh,. I was trusting... Okay, this is where I died. So I was trusting he was going to get back on his horse beforehand, and he didn't. So I didn't do anything about it. I could have intervened a ranged player or something like that, but... Uh, I'm waiting for battle res here, and we're going to get it pretty quickly. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're, then we're just going to go back into it. And it's just going to be this rotation the whole fight. So we dodge a spectral charge, we move behind him. 
And then uh, same thing here, shared suffering is coming out. I skipped ahead a little bit. I'm putting down another marker. I'm now going to heroic leap over here. And I'm going to just keep running away a little bit. And then he's going for mortal strike. And then he should be getting back on midnight if, oh no, we phased him. Okay. So then at shared suffering, I'm going to just use shield wall here because he is officially now off his horse. He won't get back on once he's sub 20%. So I just committed a CD there and then we're going to focus on midnight. All right, let's talk about what we do after this. So I, I skipped too far ahead. That's fine. So this is what my group does because this trash was actually, they basically removed the mechanics from this fight or from these mobs up here. They don't cast anything outside of like, they just melee you and cast like shoots at your group. So what we're going to end up doing up here is we're going to actually pull this stuff because it's very, very efficient. It's efficient. You can pull it very, you could pull big. Uh, we're going to tag both of these sides. And then we're going to LOS back. I got stuck on a wall there. All right, sentries come in. They all get stacked up. We are rolling a couple CDs. I have last into active. Um, yeah, it's just, it's mostly physical damage. So as long as we keep shield block up, we should be juiced. You gotta watch out for the frontal from the Natherism and the sleep pool, which is at range. Frontal is also facing range. Priest is going to dodge at their beautiful movement there around the volcanic. Good weave. And uh, yeah, they're gonna, when they get enraged, again, it's all physical damage. Warriors especially are very good at mitigating uh, physical damage. So we're not even gonna worry about it. Huge, uh, <laughs> huge follow by the just bomb guy here during the stream. Um, and now we're pulling like everything back. So our, my group ran in cause they thought I was going in, but, uh, we pull back a little bit and yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's super efficient trash. Like it's really, really efficient. I think I over pull here. I think I pulled an extra, like, I thought I actually, I pulled like an extra 3%, uh, warrior rips cause of CDs and our, it's because our, our hunter didn't MD. What a fucking dude, hunter players, man. Am I right? Didn't MD on CDs. And then our, our warrior ends up ripping because, you know, feign death is OP. Um, so the idea here is we want about 90. We wanted like 90% trash, but we end up getting like 95, which actually ended up working out in our favor because we actually skipped something else earlier, which I forgot about. Um, and then we're going to just go. We're basically going to Maiden. So we're hustling up there. I'm going to try to get there early. Now, they're, they're, it's possible to do the skip without an invis pot. It's a little sketchy, I know. But if you trust the process, you can actually do the skip too. So you hug the right here. Oh, here's where those ghost traps are located, by the way. There's a ghost trap like right here next to this dog. If you kill the dog, uh, you'll have access to two ghost traps here. So if you stand on this tile in front of this bust, I'm going to put down a marker too. So if you stand on this tile, and then if you run to the corner of the carpet here, you can avoid everything. So in front of the statue to the corner of the carpet or whatever this is, the, this like ornate design on the floor. We're rounding the corner, then we're going upstairs. And essentially what we're doing here is we're just going to mass pull guests again. Guests don't do anything. The servant has one cast, uh, which makes you have 70% reduced movement speed, which again, isn't a problem. And then valets, valets, they um, cast demoralizing chat, which reduces your damage done by 20% for like eight seconds. Just kick it. Just, so that's why I have it set focus here. We're going to kick the demoralizing shout. Beautiful kick coming out from Nama, our warrior. Uh, servant goes down. Valet is still active. I can't remember if... I don't think I chain yet. And then after this, we have basically one more pull. So I'm going to actually... I saw that the servant... There is a servant patrol back over here. I end up not pulling it, and I pull two sentries. So I'm trying to get threat. Our priest rips for a second because of healing threat. I'm going to tag these two century no maybe maybe we're fine on percent we just need the guests okay i thought i pulled centuries for a second but i maybe i should have watched this through before i started talking about it and then after this we're literally we are invising to the next boss and then we're going into maiden with lust active we have most of our cds and we're just going to go for the bird we have three and a half minutes on a tyrannical week 20 uh maiden actually has almost no health if you can do the fight right so we're chilling we're just waiting for this patrol to kind of move out a little bit so we don't fuck anything up. The priest is going to put down some feathers, I think, or some body and souls to get us a speed boost. And we're taking off. I used heroic lead there with bounding stride to get a little bit of a speed boost. You need something at the start. So whatever you can, whether it's like Tiger's Lust, a disengage post haste, a stampeding roar, will all help you get to the end of this hallway. You dip into the right. And we're set. We're chilling. We're looking at Maiden now. 
Now this fight, there's there's some people who lust pull just to get as much of a burn as possible if you know you can actually beat the barrier. If you don't think you can beat the barrier, you can save lust and CDs for that. More than likely, you'll have two barriers or three barriers to deal with based on your you know group's damage and what CDs you have. Once you have CDs kind of come back up, I would just save until the next Master Repentance so you can break through that holy, holy bulwark. Kick Holy Shocks. I tried spell reflecting it. I guess you can't spell reflect it. I thought you could. Uh, but yeah, just kick Holy Shocks because it makes your tank take a little bit of sustained damage. There's a couple of classes that can immune the Mass Repentance. If you are running uh, uh, Plague Divisor Merolith, you can Fleshcraft immune it. You can obviously use like your Berserker's Rage as Warrior. Um, you can like just Ice Block it. You can use like immunities to block it. Priest can Shadow Word Death right before it finishes its uh, the Mass Repentance cast, uh, which will then do damage to you, break you out. If you have Grievous taking on you, if you stack for uh, Quaking, like if you have two people stacked next to each other for Quaking, that Quake will break you out. That's a little bit harder to time if you're underneath it. Like any damage you take will break you out. So ideally, if you have a way to break yourself out without taking the dot, you do that instead because then you're taking less damage because the dot actually does a good bit here. You can see our DPS are actually getting kind of chunked. Everyone else was kind of able to immune it. I think the priest did a Shadow Word Death. Me and Nama used um, our Berserker's Rage. I'm going to Fleshcraft the next one, but I take. The, I didn't know if I can Fleshcraft immune it, if I'm going to be honest in this video. So you're going to see me take the dot, then try to Fleshcraft immune, because I just wanted to be safe. And um, yeah, just make sure you're putting these up against the wall. We just need to be careful because we did skip. There is packs right by this X marker up in this corner, you can see. Uh, yeah, obviously don't get hit by that also your melee need to stay spread about six yards because when she does cast her bolts uh it will cleave to everyone within six yards of that target i flush craft immune we break the we're gonna break the shield here at four four percent shield dude fucking fucking troll and uh we break through it pretty quickly and then we're gonna just kick to be safe and we're gonna finish it off so that was a two chest with 36 seconds left on the timer and that's it that's a dungeon broken down on the protection warrior again my gameplay wasn't perfect neither was most of my groups <laughs> but it was a fast enough and clean enough kind of run slash process throughout the dungeon that we were able to save ourselves uh, nine minutes on the timer uh before failing it so we finally got it done it was really fucking good i'm really happy with my team we've been in this we've been pro for those who watch my stream we've been progging this dungeon for like literal weeks now and that's why i haven't been talking about it because my group just we keep making a lot of mistakes and there's nothing that i really wanted to show off so this is the first run that i felt happy with i hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys learned something if there's any tips or tricks that i missed leave them in the comment section down below uh really quick huge shout out to my patreons swole bear linus brian and pan thank you guys so much for the support uh i can't thank you guys enough it allows me to make content like this consistently and uh, yeah, just awesome. So hope you guys are staying happy, healthy, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.